Hello and welcome to Doubles and Trebles. We're back once again on the racing front and we've got a huge, huge race to give you an anti-post pointers for. It is the Epsom Derby that we're talking about today, widely regarded as the single most important race in the world of flat racing, I think it's fair to say. The ultimate test of a racehorse at one of the toughest and most unique racetracks in the world. A race that shapes the breeding of thoroughbreds for years to come. It's been won by immortals of the game. Sugar, Nashwan, Galileo, See the Stars, the list goes on. And the 2021 renewal is now just days away so we're here to run through the key contenders and hopefully pick out some anti-post value for you so just to run you down the epsom derby it's on saturday the 5th of june so as i speak uh about 10 days away it's run over a mile and a half it's for three-year-old colts only and as we did in our recent oaks anti-post preview i think if you haven't watched that get that on straight after we're going to give you the lowdown on each of the contenders at the top of the market and a few of the outsiders too so Going to go straight in before I pass you to Adam. Straight in with the favourite, Bolshoi Ballet, two to one. A similar theme to the other classics we've been covering this season. Similar theme to classics, full stop, to be honest. Trained by Aidan O'Brien. Adam, what do you make of the favourite? Yeah, I think he's a, I think he's definitely the right favourite. Um, he's solid as you like. Um, and I'm finding it quite difficult to take him on. Really, I will be doing. Obviously, that is the uh, that is the gist of of all my punting. Pretty much, but pretty much mandatory on this channel. Yeah. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, but yes, yeah, simply Pyman has been the most impressive um Derby contender that we've seen this year. Um, he's won the two um the the, the traditional route, if you like, of the Irish horses. Um, that's the Ballysack Stakes in April and the Derrinstown Stud Stakes in early May. Um, he's won both of them. Um, the Derrinstown, he was really quite impressive, to be honest. Um, he had McSweeney, um, another horse we're going to come on to, nearly seven lengths behind that day at Leopardstown. And the way that he quickened up and strode out, if you like, from the bend and it put the race to bed in a matter of strides, was going away at the line. Um, yeah, I thought he was really, really impressive. And that's why... He's, a, he's currently best priced nine to four favourite and almost certain to go off favourite on the day. Max Sweeney, who I've mentioned, went as, as since that race, gone on to win the Irish 2000 Guineas. So the form could hardly be have been boosted any yeah, better. D- decent um, Frank in other form yeah, there. Yeah, we're going to come on to Max Sweeney a little bit later on. But yeah, it just looked all over a derby horse to me, Pine Man, the Bol- uh, Bolshoi Ballet. Yeah, it's sure to say the trip, if you ask me, um, has won on good ground and soft ground. Ticks a hell of a lot of boxers. Um, absolutely the right favourite, given what we've seen in the trials races. O'Brien usually do- dominates the Derrinstown Stud Stakes itself. And more often than not, the winner, if, it, if O'Brien has the winner of that race, it normally goes on, the Derrinstown normally goes on to be the O'Brien first choice horse in the derby itself or the shortest price winner, whichever way you want to describe it. Horses to have won the Derrinstown and gone on to derby glory for that stable include Galileo, High Chaparral, um, you know, the, the not not necessarily won the derby, but you know, legends that won the Derrinstown went off first choice in the derby. And you know, won, some won Galileo, won High Chaparral, didn't Yates, Dylan Thomas, Fame and Glory. The list goes on. Um, yeah, I just think he's um, he's pretty bomb proof. I do think there is some each way value in the market, but if someone was come to me today or in the comments below says, right, I'm back in Bolshoi Valley at nine to four, I wouldn't put you off at all. So not many chinks in the armour of the favourite then in Adam's eyes, but if we move on to the second favourite, you say about each way value, I don't think there's much to each way value with high definition. Um, also trained by Ed O'Brien, where do you stand on this one? Oh, uh, this horse splits opinion um, and I've got a strong opinion on him. I don't see the fascination with high definition at all. I cannot have him. I just can't have him. We mentioned him for the in our 2000 guineas preview. I know he didn't run in that and never looked likely to do so, but we have touched on him. Um, and I've been saying for a long time on WhatsApp groups or with friends that I just can't have high definition. He's never looked like a Derby horse to me, um, to, to my eye. Um, yes, he won both juvenile starts, Pine Man both from what looked like absolutely impossible positions um, and in re- it won in really entertaining fashion, if you like, way out the back, out the back of the TV and got there on the line on both starts. One of them was a maiden. I think the second start was a group three, something along them lines. And he's he was the Derby favourite over the winter um, from the O'Brien yard. But he's four to one for this for the Derby, having finished third in the Dante. That was a race that, to me, he never looked like winning. You know, he it, it just he never looked like winning that for me. He took himself for a walk around one of the bends, which seems to have been unreported. The first bend at York, high definition, drifted three, four, or five five um five horses wide on on the bend that's a that's a definite chink in his arm in his armor but yeah i just i mean the dante is the best uk derby trial for me 
But it ha- must be said that the O'Brien team have never won the Dante and gone on to win the Derby with the same horse. Aidan O'Brien himself, and I don't agree with this, he says that the Dante is too close to the to the um to the derby itself in terms of in the gap the number of days between the two races. I don't buy into that myself, but he says that and I'm you know, you can't argue with me. I think he's won the derby ten times, O'Brien. So, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So most of the trials, particularly the Irish ones, the Derrens Town that we've already touched on, come a little bit earlier in the calendar. It gives them time to get the horse home and and um and recover and get ready for the for the derby, etc. But yeah, showed a, like I say, showed a bit of temperament in the Dante. Um, pushed along coming into the straight, one of the first off the bridle, high definition, took a long time, took an age to get going, um, and he just looked a bit of a plodder to me. Um, looked more of a stayer, possibly a ledger horse. He doesn't strike me as a, as, a Dan, as a derby horse at all, never has. Reports going into that race suggest that he'd had a setback earlier in the season, high definition, so he was com- that's why he was forced to go the Dante route, even though it's not the preferred route for that stable. We've, but we've heard it all before. We heard it with Japan, a horse that O'Brien ran in the Dante in the derby and you know was never re- really right until later in the season. Um, I think that could happen again here with, with high definition. Um, I'm very adamant, and I've got no inside information, but I'm adamant that uh, Ryan Moore will ride Bolshoi Ballet, and that will see the ballet go off go off even shorter than what he is now at nine to four. But as we've seen already this season, an able deputy in Mr. One Frankie de Tori may well end up riding high definition, so it may still get supported in the market. But I'm dead against high definition. Yeah, well, Frankie, not a not a bad deputy, as you say, but yeah, plenty of reason to uh, maybe give that one a wide berth, I think. And uh, you know, we've already mentioned this horse. You know, when we talked about the favourite, but next in the market, Jim Bolger's Max Sweeney, a uh, horse we've we've spoken a lot about this season already, uh, won the Irish 2000 Guineas just a few days before uh, we, we speak now. So this has to be a, a serious contender, surely. Yep, six to one best price in the market. Now a two-time Group One winner, so he's got the pretty much the best form. He's the he's definitely the only uh, two-time Group One winner in the field. There is another couple of Group One winners from juvenile from the juvenile days lower down in the market. One of them might not run. We'll come on to that. But yeah, Max Weenie has won the um, the Group One Racing Post Trophy at Doncaster, which is a known Derby trial over a mile as a, at the back end of their juvenile campaigns. And then he's come up first time this year in the heavy ground at the Curra and he's won the he's won the Irish two thousand guineas on his seasonal debut. Both on heavy ground, it must be said, and the forecast isn't for heavy ground. I don't think it'll be any slower than good, uh, personally, and I hope that is the case. Um, the uh, clock of the course from uh, Epsom was on yesterday in an interview, so I think it'll be good ground. That's a big question mark against McSweeney. Um, yeah, a horse that we mentioned earlier, but was put firmly in his place by Bolshaw Ballet in the Derry's Town. But uh, Jim Bolger reported after the race that it showed a problem when returning home. So maybe there was an excuse. Um, but visually, he did empty out very quickly towards the business end. He drifted in the market on the day on of the Derrance Town. There was joint favourites the night before. I think Bolshoi went off even money and McSweeney went off three to one. That's what, you know, that tells a story there. But anyway, he was beaten nearly seven lengths there. I know Jim Bulger is having the time of his life at the, what it looks like at the moment. He's had the English 2000 guineas winner. He's had the one two in the Irish 2000 guineas. So you wouldn't put it past him, but... You know, I think this is a, a, a heavy ground horse or a soft ground horse, and he isn't going to get that on the day. And he's already been beat soundly by Bolshoi Ballet. Well, I've got to tell you, as a northern man living in the south of England, that the weather does tend to improve quite rapidly in June, and I think we'll be doing well to get heavy ground for this. But uh, there we are. Yeah, so that's Max Sweeney covered. We're going to move it on, and we've already touched on the Dante with high definition. Now, Hurricane Lane, 8-1 uh, to one in this market, as we speak, finished two lengths in front of high definition. But it's double the price. So what's yeah. the story there? Well, the story is Pine Man. It's wrong. It's sim- it's simply wrong. If if you ask me, Hurricane Lane has done nothing wrong at all. He's one of three horses currently at around the eight to one mark. This is the first one we're going to mention. He's done nothing wrong at all this season. He's had two starts, uh, two wins. He's in he's unbeaten in three races in total. Won a good conditions race at Newbury first time up this year, and the horses in behind him that day have held up the form pretty well. Maximal ran a good race at Chester, probably should have won one of the Derby trials there. River Olwen has been on to won a good race at Newmarket. Tasman Bay has ran um, second in a good race behind John Leeper, another horse we're going to come on to. So the form has got some some uh, some strength there uh, behind Hurricane Lane. So the Dante was a little bit of a strange race to to view because, as often happens at York. Um, and O'Brien pacemaker just went off 
like a bullet out of a gun, Holly Doyle, Roman Empire, the horse was called, um, miles clear um, at the two at the three pole, and you was wondering whether it would hold on. Hurricane Lane got going like he did at Newbury, the nice long straight at York and Newbury, got going, got rolling, stays all day, absolutely guaranteed cast iron stayer, Hurricane Lane. There's no question marks about this boy staying the trip at Epsom. Um, it's just whether, the only question mark you might say is whether he's quick enough. Bolshoi Ballet's shown the turn of foot. And you need both in the, you need both at Epsom for the derby. It's the ultimate test, as we've said. Stamina, balance, bit of speed as well. Hurricane Lane might come up short with uh, on the speed front, but he's definitely got it in the stamina. Um, like I say, stayed on really well in the Dante. I just yeah, I just don't know why he's doubled the price of high definition. It's plain wrong to me. Plain, plain wrong. Don't get it at all. And if I was having a bet right now, Pine Man, Hurricane Lane would be the one for me. There you go, then. Hurricane Lane eight to one, and it does uh, does seem to suggest that the tactical nature of the race could be quite key as to Hurricane Lane's chances. You know, if you get the tap for toe, that could be a problem. But you you just don't know how these races are going to go. There's a lot of um, lot of different ways that things can pan out, and and uh, yeah, definitely sounds like a lively contender. You make it make a solid case there each way. I think uh, next up, you'll have to pronounce uh, excuse my pronunciation here, but Muhafif. Yeah, I hope I'm I'm nearly there. Uh, eight to one again, very impressive. Uh, the 2000 Guineas day, but this does look like a, a big step up. How, how do you see this one? Yeah, got a really lofty uh, racing post rating for his for his um, for his win on Guineas Day, an easy win. So um, on our, on racing post ratings, which aren't the official ratings, but they're you know very reputable from the racing post. Bolshoi Ballet's um, achieved a racing post rating of one uh, one one seven at Leopards Town in his last race, and Mu Harfeth was given the same for a for a five length listed win on Guineas Day. Um, I'm going to pick holes in the form though. It was it was impressive. It was on quick ground which he might not get up. So, I mean, he could do, but I think it's going to be genuinely good. Um, and the th- it was only a four-runner field. And the three-runner, unfortunately for Muharfeth and fans of him, the form has not been got any substance to it at all because none of the three rivals he beat on May the 1st have since run. So we don't know if they're good, bad or indifferent. Um, after that race, he was matched uh, in the days after it. He was matched on Betfair exchange for the derby at as low as uh, 4.9 to 1. Um, which is, you know, pre- pretty pretty low and was right up there one of the favourites. Now on the exchange, he's out to 12 and a half, 13 and a half, which is, is getting enticing. Um, he's definitely in the could be anything category. Mm. But if you comp- compare him to the likes of Hurricane Lane and John Leeper, who we're going to come on to, Mu Harfeff has got more question marks. It's not his fault. It's simply because the form hasn't been hasn't been proven either way yet. So, could be anything, but I would rather be with Hurricane Lane if I had to pick between the two. But an interesting run, no doubt. For you, what kind of price would Mahafez have to get out to before you'd be tempted to have a little go? Oh, if he went to, if he went to, if if, if turned up on on the day and he was about the same price he is now, I'd happily back him win only if he was twelve thirteen on the exchange, not for a lot, but just as a just possibly as a cover bet, um, because I think because it's that as I always say on anything we talk about golf darts racing whatever if the price is too big back it mm. and i think that 12 to 1 about this horse you know depending on the final declarations but 12 to 1 if this horse was taking place the afternoon is this afternoon is too big it should mm. probably be you know seven or eight to one i'm not saying he should be favorite but it's always price related pie man and like i say this horse was as, as low as 5.9 um on the exchange it must be said that that was before bolshoi ballet went and bolted up um, you know, and, and the market's corrected itself since. But yeah, it's one to keep an eye on. Yeah, definitely one to keep an eye on. And another one in it around the eight to one mark is John Leeper, who's two from two this year. And he's had a spin around Epsom behind closed doors the other day. So uh, an interesting one again. Yeah, so he went to something that they call Breakfast with the Stars, which is an opportunity, um, for an official race course gallop, if you like. But I do think it works because Epsom is so unique. So a couple of contenders normally turn up, none of the Irish ones, to be fair, but it's about two or three weeks before the big race itself. They turn up and they have a gallop round um, and, you know, it's recorded and, and it's, all, it's all it's all official. And, you know, I think it is a good idea, given how unique the course is. Um, but John Leeper, for me, has got to be the most interesting or intriguing runner in this field, um, n- no doubt. Um, and it's took me the longest to draw my conclusion on him. Which I, which I'll explain. Um, it's rare that the best bred horse in the Derby is not from the Aidan O'Brien yard because he's littered with Galileos and Camelots, etc. Um, but John Leeper could be that horse this year by Frankel out of Snow Fury, who herself was an Oaks runner uh, winner, Snow Fury, and uh, John Leeper runs in the same colours. John Leeper, believe it or not, is actually um, named 
uh, after the father of the train. So the trainer of uh, John Leeper is called um, Ed Dunlop and his farm father was nicknamed John Leeper. So that's uh, so the the owners who are long-standing fans of the Dunlop family in the yellow and red colours have, have have named the horse uh, after after um, Ed Dunlop's late dad. So that uh, puts a bit more pressure or a bit more intrigue to mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah, just the one start at the back end of last season for John Leeper was an eye catcher at Doncaster in a race uh, with a race over way too short a distance. It was over seven furlongs. Um, got he only got going late. Um, returned in April this year. Uh, easy winner at Newcastle in what looked a decent race in terms of you know some some decent pedigrees in there um he was he did a lot wrong that day he was slowly away he pulled pretty pretty hard early on but he really galloped away towards the end under very little pressure and that's where he really hit the derby picture for the first time that was in april um then he stepped up in class um for a listed race at newmarket a couple of weeks ago it was a messy race a lot's been made of it and the cliches have come out but there was no pace on whatsoever um, he pulled early, didn't really settle due to there being no pace. Um, and he was one of the first off the bridle ridden by William Buick that day. Adam Kirby will be on at Epsom. Um, but he, when Kirby got down to business going into the dip, um, John Leeper really did get going late on and, and went away nicely. A couple of taps and, and he was away and gone. Um, he should improve for the mile and a half. I think he'll relish the trip. Um, grounds, uh, ground either way is fine. Um, and I think he'll, he'll definitely enjoy the quicker pace at the Derby because I think that will help him settle the sure to be pace on with the Derby, given how many runners Aidan O'Brien usually have. Um, inexperience may be the question marks for his Derby prospects, um, but I can certainly see him winning at the top level at some point in his career or this season. So I'm not saying he's a definite you know, bet for the, for the Derby itself. He's interesting, don't get me wrong, but um, I'd rather be with him than against him, put it that way. And and you know, this time yesterday, when was when I was doing the notes and the research for this, um, I wouldn't have that wouldn't have been my conclusion. So I'm glad that I've been back and had a look really at his profile, rewatched his races. Um, I normally have a trifecta on the part on the um, on the Derby Pyman and try and get the one, two, three. John Leap will definitely be in that. There you go, then John Leeper at quite a big price and a very interesting runner again. There's a few intriguing runners in this field and uh, definitely a little bit of a feel of you know some of these we might not have seen quite how good they are yet and uh, just makes it fascinating. But uh, after John Leeper, there is a little bit of a gap in, in the market and we, we leap all the way up to around the 14 to one mark where we find third realm who won the uh, Lingfield Derby trail. So tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, we was the 14 to one outsider of six when winning the Lingfield Derby trail. So similar to the Lingfield Oaks trial, the outsider mm-hmm. of each respective field won the race. So again, that probably tells its own story. Not many at all Lingfield uh, Derby or Oaks trial winners go on to where uh, Gloria Epsom, Anthony Van Dyke did a couple of years ago for, for O'Brien, but he was, I think he was third or fourth choice on the day at Epsom. So that was a bit of a surprise. Um, it was a perfectly good performance by Third Realm at Lingfield. Um, caught the eye, come round the come round the uh, bend at Lingfield with a lovely swooping move, and you know just travelled into the into the straight, lovely. But to be honest, mate, the pie man at uh, the pie man, the form uh, doesn't look up to much to me. To be honest, um, he was you know there was multiple disappointments in behind. Uh, one of them from the uh, O'Brien yard was virtually pulled up by Frankie Di Tori. Um, plus, he also when he got to the front, he ran around a little bit. Um, he was being eased down by the jockey, don't get me wrong, but yeah, he didn't really run in a straight line, to be fair. So, so yeah, he can't repeat that at Epsom. 14 to 1 is probably about the right price, and I can, I think he'll stay like that until the race. Mm, enough reasons to skip by third realm, then, I think. And uh, moving on, then, Van Gogh, 16 to 1, a horse that we've, we've already spoken about plenty, and uh, one that cropped up in our 2000 Guineas previews. Might not run here, but if he does, what would you say his chances are? He's had a disjointed season, really. I don't, and it's difficult to say he's been mismanaged coming from the, coming from the yard that he does. I mean, that that's a really difficult statement to make. He's fifty five on the exchange pie man. He's sixteen to one in, on on odds checker. That gives that probably tells you he's likely not to run. But last year, at the back end of last year, he's won a, a Group One in France over a mile on soft ground. That would indicate that the horse in his classic season as a three year old would be a Derby contender without question. But then he's ran in the uh, 2000 guineas at Newmarket, finished midfield, didn't do a lot wrong, didn't pull up any trees. He's done basically the same in the Irish guineas as well, which was only on the 23rd of May. We've already said about O'Brien don't like a short gap between the Dante and the and the Derby itself. Well, Van, Gogh, Van Gogh's got an even shorter gap, so I don't think he's going to run. But even if he did, 
he wouldn't be for me. I just think that his season's been disjointed. It's a big step up from a mile to a mile and a half. Max Reen is going to try to do it, but all the other horses have tried over, a, well, most of the other horses mentioned have tried over a bit further. Um, and, his, and Van Gogh's by um, American Pharaoh, and I'm still not convinced about American Pharaoh as a sire of UK classic winners. Well, there you go then. Uh, Van Gogh, another one that we're happy to sort of skip by. And that, I mean, look, we're getting into the realms of uh, much bigger prices, more fanciful prices, but Another one I do want to ask you about that we did mention amongst the 2000 Guinness contenders was uh, Antipo's favourite for that race, I believe, at one stage, one ruler. I'd say in there, 33 to 1. Is he a genuine derby horse for you? Possibly. He's a fascinating contender, Pine Man. I mean, it's a big price. I've- yeah, I've given, I've, well, I've already given you the horse, which I think is the most wrong price in terms of too short. That's high definition, way too short, ridiculous price. Now I'll give you the one that is the most wrong price in terms of too big, and that's one ruler, 33 to 1, 40 ish on the exchange. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's remember, this horse was anti post favourite for the oh. Guinness at one stage for about a week. And that was just simply off the back of a race course gallop and a couple of comments from the trainer. We know it was a crazy 2000 Guinness anti post market. It really genuinely was. Um, but yeah, he went off 10 to 1 on the day, drifted massively. Um, you know, to say he was 92 anti post for a bit of a while and he was strong on the exchange as well. Um, didn't pull up any trees in the in the 2000 guineas, don't get me wrong. He was six, like I say, didn't pull up any trees, but tr- he travelled okay before hands and heels in the last furlong and off. Like now that's it's not it's not standout form going into the derby, but it's all price related. This horse is 33 to 1. He won the autumn stakes last year, and I always say any horse that's winning over a mile as a juvenile is is going to be an automatic derby contender. He finished second in the Racing Post Trophy behind McSweeney at Doncaster at the back end of last season. Um, that's um, you know that's again a derby trial. That was on bad ground, so you can forgive him that. And when you get to prices like this, Pyman, you have to make a little bit of an excuse for him or forgive him a oh, bad yeah. run. Um, yeah, you yeah. know. Because, like I say, we are dealing with a horse that's 33 to 1. Um, there's a bunch of horses in and around that region, 33, 40 to 1. He's the, he's the standout of those ones that are quoted in that price range. The likes of Veldrama, Lone Eagle, Gear Up, Adea, One Ruler is definitely the one you would want to be on if you had to pick just between those ones. Um, he's not got the profile of, of one of the favourites and he's less likely to win. That's why he's priced at 33 to 1. But, you know, the form last season saw him finish three quarters of a length in front of Van Gogh. Mm. And in another race, he finished... Uh, three quarters of a length behind McSweeney, as I've already mentioned, is no 33 to one shot. Um, there's pretty large question marks over him staying the trip, but that's the chance you take at these prices. His mother didn't race over him anything further than a mile, to be fair, but he is by Dabawi, so you know, give it, give one side, take the other. But like I say, certainly of interest at, at bigger prices and would be the each way selection if I was having a bet now. Yeah, nice one. I was kind of where I was looking. You've just kind of affirmed that um, that feeling. So uh, I guess all that remains is to say, is there any others in the market that we haven't touched on? Quite a comprehensive look at the top end. but Yeah, so as normal with these big big Group 1 races, Aidan O'Brien has a host of runners still entered, but are unlikely to run. But he leaves them till, he leaves them till last minute. He's got five or six that, that, still, that, that are still there. But we've mentioned the Chief too. Um, there is one that may well run, Sir Lamarack. So the, yeah, Sir, Sir Lamarack, um, he's won a handicap at Leperstown this year, which isn't the usual route that O'Brien would go, but it was really impressive. And he's not ran since April the 11th. So that signals that they may have some seriously big, uh, big prizes on the horizon for him. So he might turn up here, but he'll, he'll be, you know, at least third choice. Um, El Drama won, uh, won the, the Chester Derby trial. Um but I'm not sure how much great that form was. Maximal was in behind. We mentioned him. Um, Adea is going to be at least second choice for the Godolphin ones. Possibly isn't bred for the job. So, yeah, I think we've covered them. They've covered the main contenders, Pima. I think we have. And I think that is about all we need to uh, say at this stage. But, of course, we've got sort of nine or ten days now till race day. So, I'm sure, we'll have an update for you. One of our weekend updates where we can touch on both the Derby and the Oaks as the markets get into those. Final deck stage, we know the final fields and we're, uh, you know, we're looking at the revised prices. But that's your overview. Do let us know what you think in the comments. We'd love to hear if you've got any Derby fancies or thoughts on the, on anything that Adam said or anything we haven't covered. Uh, always good to hear your thoughts. And, and do give us a like if you enjoyed the video. And do press subscribe if you're enjoying our racing content. We've got golf going on as well now. We've got our DAS content ramping up again. It's all going on on doubles and trebles, really. So good, good to have you on board. And hopefully... You enjoyed it and we'll see you again very soon. Cheers. 